Right, so following the Tories having lost the general election and Labour essentially inheriting the country, if you haven't seen my video from yesterday explaining that the Tories losing 20% of their vote share over the 2019 election whilst Keir Starmer's bunch merely increased theirs by just 1.6% and got 640,000 fewer votes, yet still gained a landslide majority, please watch that for a more thorough explanation of what a joke of our electoral system is and why Starmer has effectively benefited heavily from circumstances completely beyond his control rather than actually winning anything himself, yet here we are. He's now the Prime Minister and therefore has set about building his cabinet and I know many creators are going to have gone through a who's who of the next government and I have no doubt I will revisit many of them or answered as they are as they prove that with the policy decisions to come. But given the lack of disabled representation in government, given as a demographic what I target the long-term sick and disabled were under 14 years of the Tories, and my own background as one of thousands of unpaid carers up and down the country who have given up everything effectively to care for sick and disabled family members, I think such families affected by such matters deserve a heads up about who Starmer has just put in charge of the DWP. Because I'm afraid you might not want to get your hopes up much with Liz Kendall now in charge there. For all the Tory claims about being tough on benefits, over the next five years, there will be 600,000 more people on sickness and disability benefits. And these benefits will cost an extra £33 billion. That is more than our current day-to-day -day expenditure on defence. The Office for Budget Responsibility says the sustained rise in health-related worklessness is holding back growth and living standards while putting ever greater pressure on the public finances. Yet all we get from the Tories is more of the same. More of the same half-baked programmes. Right, so that was footage of Liz Kendall there, the new Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, complaining to an audience hosted by the think tank Demos but under the Tories, we were basically spending more on benefits than on defence, which implies the expense of one is to blame for the lack of spending on the other. That's how many people will read that, read into her words, which is why the words she chooses to use matters. And the fact she is the Minister for Work and Pensions now shows that the very largest part of her budget, pensions, that's in her job title after all, would be the largest part of that expenditure. But she doesn't ever mention pensioners, of course. It's the dog whistle language of blaming those she believes should be working, though many clearly can't. And she doesn't trouble herself to ask why they can't, what their circumstances might be, because it's all about blaming the Tories, isn't it? Many of us in families affected know full well the impact Tory cruelty has had on all of us. It's been a matter of survival. And it's not exactly survival of the fittest we've been talking about here, is it? It's more luck of the draw as to who managed to get a successful personal independence payment claim or not. Who managed to get the universal credit disability premiums or employment and support allowance have stolen the old system of benefits? So what exactly Labour would do instead now isn't very clear. In their 136-page manifesto in this general election, for example, the word benefits only ever applies to economic benefits. That's the way it's brought into conversation throughout the, the manifesto. It's not We're not talking about Social Security there. Social Security itself is mentioned just once, and that's in relation to cracking down on fraud, and Universal Credit is mentioned only once as well, to be reviewed rather than scrapped as unworkable, and mentioned in terms only of making work pay and reducing dependence on benefits, whilst in the same section discussing child poverty hitting 70,000, yet without any trace of irony, this is the party that repeatedly refuses to end the two child benefit cap, of course. The word welfare, as it happens, is mentioned just twice, but only in relation to animal welfare and not human welfare. What a Kendall herself, then. Well, people might remember her as one of the Labour candidates to stand against Jeremy Corbyn in 2015. She had the same guy advising her as Keir Starmer did going into his tilt at the Labour leadership and since, Morgan McSweeney. And it can be said McSweeney learned from his mistakes with Kendall going into Starmer's campaign because... Kendall was the right winger, the loud and proud Blairite candidate who ended up getting just 4% of the vote from Labour members because the actual Labour membership is not nearly as right wing as the Parliamentary Party are. Telling people that Starmer was continuity Corbyn rather than equally right wing as Kendall certainly worked later on, pulled off a bit of a con, 
But one thing that might candle out at that point when she was running for leader was to stay to say on the matter of social security that she was supportive at that time of some of the cuts to welfare that the Tories were bringing in. So what does she plan to do at the DWP now that she has her feet under that desk? Well, here's an excerpt from a recent Big Issue article pondering just that. Liz Kendall made her plans for the DWP most clear in the first speech she made as Shadow Work and Pensions Secretary in March. She said one of the key reasons the Tories have failed on the economy is because they have failed on work, with the number of people out of work due to long-term sickness at an all-time high of 2.8 million. Kendall claimed that over the last 14 years, the overwhelming focus of the DWP has been on benefits and the creation of universal credit. But under Labour, she claimed, the focus would be on getting people into work. The party's back-to-work plan includes driving down NHS waiting lists, overhauling job centres to end a tick-box culture, and devolving employment support to local areas. It also wants to improve the quality of work and make work pay, which has become a bit of a Labour slogan this general election campaign. Kendall has said the only way to win back trust is to be cautious with public finances. Under our changed Labour Party, if you can work, there will be no option of a life on benefits, Liz Kendall said. Not just because the British people believe rights should go hand in hand with responsibilities, but because being unemployed or lacking basic qualifications when you're young can harm your job prospects and wages for the rest of your life. This isn't good enough for young people or for our country. In her speech, Kendall was especially focused on getting young people, of whom one in eight are not in education, employment or training, into work. She said there would be specialist employment support, new career advisors and work experience, proper mental health support early on, and real opportunities for young disabled people. She also teased back-to-work plans for the over 50s, mostly women struggling with bad hips, knees or joints, often caring for elderly parents at the same time, although this was not detailed in the Labour Manifesto. Kendall has also pledged to investigate the carer's allowance scandal, according to The Guardian. She said unpaid carers being left with debt and threatened with prosecution is unforgivable. There's a good deal of ignorance here on the part of Kendall, not the big issue. They've done sterling work in this article, I thought. But that doesn't surprise me, nor I expect a lot of people when disability rights, those familiar with such issues, are woefully underrepresented in Parliament. They have no voice there. There is still this belief that for so many people, they are choosing a life on benefits. This plays well to some of the general public. The Tories have been selling this along with their mates and the right-wing media hate rags and instilling it in people's brains for years. And it is ignorant when some people, they may get better, but others, especially if they have severe or life-limiting disabilities, that is impossible. And yet we've got documented evidence of people being attacked, such as these, by others who have bought into the workers versus shirkers mantra. Another point worth noting is the rising claim, which Kendall implies shows the Tories have been soft on benefits. Quite mad to believe that, really. Now, the Universal Credit Project does have an enormous backlog. It has suffered from delays. Yes, delays in helping people, worst of all. But given how badly the Tories have handled a number of issues over the years, COVID, the pandemic, which has led to many people suffering from long COVID, unable to work as a result of that. More claimants because they never took the pandemic seriously, but also years of austerity, years of forcing ordinary working class people to struggle whilst at the same time decimating the NHS, increasing outsourcing, making it more expensive, more of the NHS cash going to shareholders rather than the service, privatisation by stealth and effect that has seen cases of mental health issues skyrocket, whilst overseeing less provision to actually deal with that growing problem, and with money going to the pockets of shareholders, money isn't being invested into delivering a better service for them. NHS waiting lists are another similar issue, suffering from similar problems. People waiting for procedures and operations are being unable to work in the meantime. And with Labour's answer to that being to increase private health provision, which will not work because the private health sector simply lacks capacity, and it should be noted that many health professionals work in both the NHS and private practice, for example. So bringing in more staff, more private health integration, isn't necessarily going to increase the available care, because many of the health workers themselves, in many cases, already work both. It's mad, and will just waste money, in my view. Won't actually solve very much. But coming back to Liz Kendall and getting NHS waiting lists down to get some people back to work, who obviously can once treated, she might be being a tad optimistic unless Labour get a damn sight more radical about healthcare and do what must be done. Train more staff here, absolutely yes. 
But given that that takes years, get health workers back here when we need them now. People who left the country, left due to Brexit, the state the NHS under the Tories ended up in, genuinely fix it. Do I believe they will do that? Heck no. I think the amount of private health donations the likes of Starmer and West Streeting have taken makes that abundantly obvious. But getting work to pay sounds fine. The economy would get a boost with more money in ordinary people's pockets. And I would agree with that. Instead of so much going to line the pockets of the rich. But if you can't work due to your health or your disability, then that is still a moot point. If this is going to be Labour's focus rather than on social security for those who clearly need it, the support for those who need it, who cannot work, then they are going to continue to fail people. She spoke of justice for unpaid carers getting chased for overpayments of carers allowance. This I wholeheartedly support, having been on that benefit myself and this channel allowing me to get off it about a year ago now. It wasn't until I'd been overpaid, actually, that I was allowed to end my claim for that. I tried to end it before I reached that point, because I obviously I'm aware of this sort of thing. I wasn't actually allowed to wasn't allowed to end the claim because I was still a carer. Obviously, I'm still a carer. And it should be noted that should you go one penny over the earnings limit with carer's allowance, you are expected to repay the entire amount for that week. It becomes a trap when they are supposed to track all of this. The DWP is supposed to keep track of this business. Yet they failed to under the Tories. And then the DWP has come for so many people who did not realise they'd been overpaid under the Tories. It does need sorting. And there is injustice here. But, and it's a big but, Kendall's saying that this goes hand in hand with saying over 50s need to get back into work. And she mentions people having had joint replacements once recovered getting into work. But also crucially mentioned that they might be caring for elderly parents at the same time. So there is an implication that carers may be targeted to find work if they haven't already around their caring duties. Or what? What are you going to do about that, Liz Kendall? Take away their carer's allowance? That benefit needs reform, yes, but not that kind of reform. There is certainly cause, I feel, for disabled and long-term sick people to keep an eye on Kendall. She's a cause for concern, in my view. Her rhetoric is that of the Tories who came before her, and Labour is all about change, as her slogan implied. Well, I'm not seeing it here. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where Keir Starmer last September decided it was a good idea to ditch a promise he had made to the long-term sick and disabled to enshrine their rights and bring them into line with UN recommendations. Now, why would he do that, I wonder? His lies extending to the disabled are, I suppose, an example of inclusivity. He's lied to everyone else, hasn't he? Why not them too? And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.